Good afternoon. Um, it's really a pleasure being with you here today. So what I thought I would do before we talk about what uh, Miki discussed, which is building this next generation cloud native network in Japan, I want to take a few minutes just to talk to you about a story of transformation, which is about my life journey coming to Japan from India and the US. So I've been a few places across the world. Um, so of course, finished my, uh, my studies in the US, worked in many places, and, um, and I was peacefully living in California until I got a really strange call saying, hey, what do you think about going to India? I said, well, I like Indian food, but I don't know what else I would do in India. And um, the context about India was building from the ground up another greenfield telco that is covering 1.3 billion people. A network that manages that capacity is not easy to build. India doesn't have the infrastructure that Japan has, lots of challenges. So um, I decided to go to India to uh, work for a company called Reliance Geo, which became, honestly speaking, the Cinderella story in the telecom. If you, if you have not heard about it, I want to tell you um, a little bit about what Reliance Geo have done um, in India and the lessons learned of what we are going to do in Japan based on some of those activities that we've launched in India. So um, in less than a year, I remember the first day I actually walked into India, you par your phone, and the only symbol you see in the phone is 2G. So the country did not even talk about 3G, might as well 4G, and future 5G. So in less than one year of transformation, Reliance Geo put about 160 million subscribers in only one year. India went from a country that was 154th in mobile broadband index to being now number one data consumption country in the world. So a huge transformation, but that only happened because network and business model was hugely differentiated. So I, I talked about what is the digital service provider highlight in, in, uh, in India, which is uh, Geo became the largest wireless subscribers, largest fastest mobile growing network, highest voice consumption, largest high quality video consumption. And then in terms of uh, quality, of course, launching a network in a country that obviously infrastructure is always challenged, the goal and objective is not just to be a me too solution. Go and replace 2G with purely LTE only network. And again, look at the mass and scale of this country, 1.3 billion people, that's a significant amount of people that you have to cater for in terms of capacity, in terms of coverage, and in terms of network quality. So the average consumption in India before Reliance Geo was about 750 megabytes per subscriber. And today it's about 20 GB per subscriber per month. So a significant uptake on data consumption. So if I give you today what are the merits, how do you build the future networks, and what is Rakuten going to do in Japan? There's primarily four building blocks that we are going to address in this network. One is about disaggregation. The disaggregation meaning, very simply, separate hardware from software. The hardware must become a commodity. The hardware must become off-the-shelf compute. And software is where we build value. We want to be a software-centric organization. Cloud scale and virtualization. So in telecom, the truth is, this industry that we are in, especially in telco, I, I would consider that we're still um, uh, not progressive enough if you compare against web scale companies, Facebook, Google, Amazon, and even Rakuten IT uh, organization, we have pushed the envelope into moving to cloud. But every telco in the world today is in this journey of what is called transformation and been stuck in transformation. And in fact, if you are not aware of this, the big secret is there is not a single telco in the world that have moved their workloads to the cloud. And I think Rakuten will be the only company in the world that's going to enable this. So software, we talked about the importance of software. So it's extremely important when we separate hardware and software that we focus on software suites as a service, as a platform. And this leads to full automation and orchestration. So I've heard many people talk about, hey, I have 3,000 engineers, and that means my quality in my network must be good. Well, I would argue that's not necessarily the case. Having more engineers is not equal to better quality. Having full automation and having the ability to monitor real-time every subscriber quality is a key differentiator. So we are embedding from day zero automation into our organization. Our efficiency metrics that we will achieve, I, I think, will be unparalleled. So these are really the, this, the, what we consider the building blocks for next-generation telco network. 
So why, why do we have to worry about this transformation? Well, of course, the telecom industry is changing a lot, and there are many trends that require us to think differently. So if you look at the, at the ecosystem, um, from influencers such as you know, web-scale companies that are wanting to really uh, sell more over-the-top applications, open source, uh, massive data, uh, driving huge volumes, um, technology and deployment and organization. The world is changing for traditional telecom companies. So if you are focused on connectivity, I think you are heading into a really undeterministic path. Connectivity, as far as we are concerned, is actually an afterthought. How you build and monetize on top of connectivity is a hugely important thing. And that requires transformation and thinking in a new digital service provider. So the customer perception also of, of uh, value continues to evolve. You know, back in the day, you remember voice was the only thing a customer was caring about. It went voice, which was nothing but a fixed line to the home, to mobile voice, mobile data, and mobile services. So what really matters today is the quality of experience. How do we push the envelope on quality of experience? And so all of this now requires us to really think differently. How do we become more nimble? More nimble will only happen when you build cloud-native networks. Existing networks are unscalable. It will not scale. That requires us to what we talked about earlier. Remember the four blocks I mentioned, which is about the disaggregation of hardware and software? Everything on this network pushing it to open uh, source, including what we're going to do on radio access and what we do on core. Those brings huge efficiencies. And most importantly, we must be customer obsessed. And the network and the automation and the AI and the machine learning that we're going to implement is all about deriving better customer experience at a much better value to end consumer. So, um, so what are the, when we think about um, um, the transformation or the journey that we are taking today in Japan? Well, one is a complete um, shift from infrastructure. Infrastructure, which is about the idea of monitoring this monolithic hardware to being end-to-end -end service owner. Speed, can I roll out sp uh, networks faster, quicker than traditional uh, operators do? So we have been challenged, by the way, we have been challenged by media saying, how could you do this? It is not possible to build a network in only 12 months. It is not possible to build a network with only you know, four to five billion dollars of investment. Well, I'll tell you what, I cannot wait to show them that is not the case. It is possible because we are applying a very different architecture from day zero. Applying different technologies, such as really moving all of our workloads to cloud, allow us to roll out services at a fraction of the time that other telecommunication companies spend to deploy uh, new technologies even like 5G. And of course, virtualization. So this is my favorite topic. I mean, every telecom company in the world have been talking about virtualization. But you should really ask a question. What have you virtualized to date that is achieving the efficiency and res resiliency? See, the, the nice thing about Rakuten, Rakuten is not a telecommunication company. Rakuten understood IT very well. And that, I think, is a huge added advantage to us. So when we talk about virtualization, our IT organization understood already virtualization years ago. Taking the same concepts of how you run IT-centric organization to telco has been talked about but never been realized. So this is something that we're very excited about. So when you think about virtualization, our network is 100% virtualized. That, in that includes also the radio access, which is a very, very big thing in the industry that we're in. So. Um, I want to skip through the sake of time a few things. So now I want to talk specifically about Rakatan Network. So this is something we haven't really shared a lot of details about. But I think now we have done enough from um, the beginning of the year till today to give you a little bit more detail about why we're excited about the opportunity to bring complete disruption to Japan as a whole, and who, who will be the beneficial from all this disruption is the consumers in Japan. And ultimately, what we're gonna deliver is intelligent telco cloud. Telco cloud is very, very important to our entire architecture. So, um, so the world first implementation of cloud telco architecture is actually gonna happen in Japan and it's gonna happen in Rakuten. While everybody have been talking for a while now about this journey of transformation, this architecture 
that's depicted in front of you. One is to say hardware agnostic, meaning any workload that runs this network, whether it is from radio, whether it is core, whether it's transport, can it run into hardware agnostic? That is what we call COTS appliances, off-the-shelf off compute. That in any telco today does not exist. Well, the, in Rakuten's network, we've completely simplified our hardware story. We own the hardware, we build the hardware for our data center, and we build the hardware not just for a large data center, for our mobile edge compute. So common virtualization infrastructure. So the, one, uh, the idea is to say, can I deploy private cloud across the entire environment, and the environment from large data center to distributed edge compute data center? So in this industry, of course, you've heard many, many people talk about mobile edge compute, but nothing has been realized in production. The first implementation of true mobile edge compute will also happen in Rakuten, will happen in Japan. And the implication to end consumer is faster, quicker, almost near zero latency to access application on content. And then, um, you know, this concept of automation is very important. We want to run this network with very lean operation, fully automated. Uh, a customer should not really be calling our call center to complain about our problem. We're going to convert operation from being reactive to proactive, and our operational headcount metrics are driven by machine learning algorithms, about AI implementation, utilizing big data. You've heard many, many of the speakers today talk about the, imp the importance of, of AI and machine learning and, and the network that we're implementing that is from day zero. All of our network is fully automated. So um, in, in summary, what is the characteristics of our network we're building? Well, we have one converged core architecture. And what I mean by converged core, we don't have to worry about building and transforming from 4G to 5G. From day zero, this network is supporting 4G, 5G, as well as converged Wi-Fi core. Network slicing, you've heard many, if you have not heard about 5G and its benefit, Network slicing is the ability to deliver specific experiences to specific segments. It is almost offering network for specific verticals. It could be things like I'm offering specific network for uh, military type of application, for IoT type of application. You could only achieve network slicing if you deploy true 5G. And mark my word about the concept of true 5G. Every telco in Japan is going to launch 5G in my opinion, I would never consider what they're launching in 5G true 5G. So the architecture of 5G happens into something called standalone, uh, standalone 5G core and non-standalone 5G core. If you truly want to offer functionalities and capabilities like network slicing into this uh, new architecture, you must deploy standalone 5G core, which Rakuten is deploying. Complete service automation must be implemented from day zero. Edge, edge is such an important thing. So um, no matter what we do, and even if you hear about uh, 5G and its benefit and people talk about latency, if you don't deploy mobile edge compute, part of your strategy, you could never achieve the desired result. So the concept is simple. If I push content closer to the user, that means user could access the content faster, quicker, easier. So that's the whole idea of latency. Virtual scaling, so capacity. How do you deal with capacity? Capacity should not be a manual effort. The whole infrastructure should auto-scale up, auto-scale down. It should auto-heal and auto-resolve problems. This is also very unique. Security is ingrained in the architecture, not as an afterthought. And of course, all the services that will come in in the future, whether you think about voice, mobile, uh, traditional services, AR, VR, how do you deploy these things faster, quicker? So the reality is this architecture is the really key advantage that we think we have. And what we're excited about this is the journey of this transformation is not just going to be felt in Japan. This is to us a world first implementation of a true end-to-end -end cloud native network that has never ever happened in the industry uh, for a while. So um, I talked a little bit about 5G, but I want to explain to you what does 5G transformation for Rakuten really looks like. So um, if you look at any traditional operator, whether in Japan or outside of Japan, to upgrade to 5G, it's actually an, a very unnatural process. The upgrades that have to happen, firstly, they have to completely virtualize their infrastructure. They have to deploy new core architecture. They have to completely deploy new radio access. In Rakuten's world, the entire core typology, including our IP network, is fully ready for 5G. 
So our transformation for 5G is just about adding one radio access site in, in the future. So it's a much simpler approach, and you'll see a lot more of our announcement, specifically about our launch plan of, uh, of 5G in addition to our future network on LTE. So um, um, I, I hope this gives you now a context that, uh, in summary, I want to tell you a couple of things that why the, our team that's working on mobile network launch is excited about. One, this is, again, the world first cloud native network, end to end virtualized. Radio access have never been virtualized yet in any of this industry. Implementation of virtualization and radio only happening in Rakuten. And to that extent, that's what we think the huge benefit. Automation is implemented part of our strategy. Our entire machine learning and AI algorithm is gonna drive the automation that we need to convert operation from reactive to proactive. And I think this is just the beginning. I mean, this is the first that we've talked actually publicly about what we're doing in the MNO side. And I hope this just, just get, what's the appetite a little bit about what to expect at the end of the day, what this all will mean. Just wait and see the disruption that we're gonna cause to the marketplace. Wait till you see the transformation that Japan is gonna see. I started telling you about Geo story. Before Geo launched, there was 15 mobile operators. After it launched, there was three. Data consumption reduced in terms of pricing, remarkably different. So I think the consumers benefited. And all of the side industries also started to take advantage of this economics that we have introduced in the marketplace. I see the same thing is gonna happen in Japan. It is well overdue for disruption. This network architecture, we think that's gonna bring the value and the economics that we require to, um, uh, to deploy this network. And um, um, so with that saying, I, I thank you very much. I hope this gives you just a preview and hopefully in, in future sessions, you'll see a lot more um, as we get closer to our launch plan uh, in October of 2019. Thank you very much.